April 13th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Joshua chapters 22 and 23 from the Old Testament. Then Joshua summoned the Reubenites, Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh and told them, You have carried out all the instructions of Moses, the Lord's servant, and you have obeyed all I have told you. You have not abandoned your fellow Israelites this entire time, right up to this very day. You have completed the task given you by the Lord your God. Now the Lord your God has made your fellow Israelites secure, just as he promised them. So now you may turn around and go to your homes in your own land, which Moses, the Lord's servant, assigned to you east of the Jordan. But carefully obey the commands and instructions Moses, the Lord's servant, gave you. Love the Lord your God, follow all his instructions, obey his commands, be loyal to him, and serve him with all your heart and being. Joshua rewarded them and sent them on their way. They returned to their homes. Now to one half-tribe of Manasseh, Moses had assigned land in Bashan, and to the other half, Joshua had assigned land on the west side of the Jordan with their fellow Israelites. When Joshua sent them home, he rewarded them, saying, Take home great wealth, a lot of cattle, silver, gold, bronze, iron, and a lot of clothing. Divide up the goods captured from your enemies with your brothers. So the Reubenites, Gadites, and half-tribe of Manasseh left the Israelites in Shiloh in the land of Canaan and headed home to their own land in Gilead which they acquired by the Lord's command through Moses. The Reubenites, Gadites, and half-tribe of Manasseh came to Galilath near the Jordan in the land of Canaan and built there, near the Jordan, an impressive altar. The Israelites received this report. Look, the Reubenites, Gadites, and half-tribe of Manasseh have built an altar at the entrance to the land of Canaan at Galilath, near the Jordan, on the Israelite side. When the Israelites heard this, the entire Israelite community assembled at Shiloh to launch an attack against them. The Israelites sent Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the priest, to the land of Gilead, to the Reubenites, Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. He was accompanied by ten leaders, one from each of the Israelite tribes, each one a family leader among the Israelite clans. They went to the land of Gilead to the Reubenites, Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh and said to them, The entire community of the Lord says, Why have you disobeyed the God of Israel by turning back today from following the Lord? You built an altar for yourselves and have rebelled today against the Lord. The sin we committed at Peor was bad enough. To this very day we have not purified ourselves. It even brought a plague on the community of the Lord. Now today you dare to turn back from following the Lord? You are rebelling today against the Lord? Tomorrow he may break out in anger against the entire community of Israel. But if your own land is impure, cross over to the Lord's own land, where the Lord himself lives and settle down among us. But don't rebel against the Lord or us by building for yourselves an altar, aside from the altar of the Lord our God. When Achan, son of Zerah, disobeyed the command about the city's riches, the entire Israelite community was judged, though only one man had sinned. He most certainly died for his sin. The Reubenites, Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh answered the leaders of the Israelite clans. El God, the Lord, El God, the Lord, he knows the truth. Israel must also know. If we have rebelled or disobeyed the Lord, don't spare us today. If we have built an altar for ourselves to turn back from following the Lord, by making burnt sacrifices and grain offerings on it, or by offering tokens of peace on it, the Lord himself will punish us. We swear we have done this because we were worried that in the future, your descendants would say to our descendants, What relationship do you have with the Lord God of Israel? The Lord made the Jordan a boundary between us and you Reubenites and Gadites. You have no right to worship the Lord. In this way, your descendants might cause our descendants to stop obeying the Lord. 
So we decided to build this altar, not for burnt offerings and sacrifices, but as a reminder to us and you and to our descendants who follow us, that we will honor the Lord in his very presence with burnt offerings, sacrifices, and tokens of peace. Then in the future, your descendants will not be able to say to our descendants, you have no right to worship the Lord. We said, if in the future they say such a thing to us or to our descendants, we will reply, see the model of the Lord's altar that our ancestors made, not for burnt offerings or sacrifices, but as a reminder to us and you. Far be it from us to rebel against the Lord by turning our back today from following after the Lord by building an altar for burnt offerings, sacrifices, and tokens of peace aside from the altar of the Lord our God, located in front of his dwelling place. When Phineas the priest and the community leaders and clan leaders who accompanied him heard the defense of the Reubenites, Gadites, and the Manassehites, they were satisfied. Phineas, son of Eleazar, the priest, said to the Reubenites, Gadites, and the Manassehites, Today we know that the Lord is among us, because you have not disobeyed the Lord in this. Now you have rescued the Israelites from the Lord's judgment. Phineas, son of Eleazar, the priest, and the leaders left the Reubenites and Gadites in the land of Gilead and reported back to the Israelites in the land of Canaan. The Israelites were satisfied with the report and gave thanks to God. They said nothing more about launching an attack to destroy the land in which the Reubenites and Gadites lived. The Reubenites and Gadites named the altar. Surely it is a reminder to us that the Lord is God. A long time passed after the Lord made Israel secure from all their enemies, and Joshua was very old. So Joshua summoned all Israel, including the elders, rulers, judges, and leaders, and told them, I am very old. You saw everything the Lord your God did to all these nations on your behalf, for the Lord your God fights for you. See, I have parceled out to your tribes these remaining nations, from the Jordan to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the nations I defeated. The Lord your God will drive them out from before you and remove them, so you can occupy their land as the Lord your God promised you. Be very strong. Carefully obey all that is written in the law scroll of Moses, so you won't swerve from it to the right or the left, or associate with these nations that remain near you. You must not invoke or make solemn declarations by the names of their gods. You must not worship or bow down to them. But you must be loyal to the Lord your God, as you have been to this very day. The Lord drove out from before you great and mighty nations. No one has been able to resist you to this very day. One of you makes a thousand run away, for the Lord your God fights for you, as he promised you he would. Watch yourselves carefully. Love the Lord your God. But if you ever turn away and make alliances with these nations that remain near you and intermarry with them and establish friendly relations with them, know for certain that the Lord our God will no longer drive out these nations from before you. They will trap and ensnare you. They will be a whip that tears your sides and thorns that blind your eyes until you disappear from this good land the Lord your God gave you. Look, today I am about to die. You know with all your heart and being that not even one of all the faithful promises the Lord your God made to you is left unfulfilled. Every one was realized. Not one promise is unfulfilled. But in the same way, every faithful promise the Lord your God made to you has been realized. It is just as certain. If you disobey, that the Lord will bring on you every judgment until he destroys you from this good land which the Lord your God gave you. If you violate the covenantal laws of the Lord your God which he commanded you to keep and follow, worship, and bow down to other gods, the Lord will be very angry with you and you will disappear quickly from the good land which he gave you. God, this is just such a great story about Joshua's time when the nation of Israel realizes that they're in this together, uh, that they're not only 
your special promise to people for this land um, which is all good but also if any of them do anything bad if any of them uh, create sin all of them could go down and here we see fellow brothers in Christ keeping tabs on other fellow brothers in Christ for the totality of the entire nation Gosh, I wish we could do that nowadays. Seems that our society has become so politically correct that we have forgotten that there is a big difference, a huge difference between talking to our fellow brother or sister in Christ and loving them enough to remind them of the path they need to be on. I just heard somebody call it, uh, we need to give people more grace the other day. And then the context she was talking about it, you can tell I'm still agitated about it, God, I am so sorry. But she's like, we need to give them more grace. And I'm thinking, no, you just don't like confrontation. I think there's a big difference between grace and being afraid of somebody not liking you. We should be much more fearful of you, God, than fearful of, of a man who or a woman who might not like us because we've called them out on a sin. I would hope that my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ would love me enough to call me out on my sins. I am very blessed that I have people in my life who love me that much, who are willing to set me down and go, Janelle, I need to talk to you about something. And I so appreciate when they do this because it means it's something getting in the way of my relationship with you, God. It means it's something that's getting in the way of me talking to other people about you. And how awesome is it that they are willing to come to me without worry of what I will think or won't think, but out of love because they know that I want to stay on that path for you, God. It absolutely drives me crazy in this so-called politically correct world that we have forgotten how we are responsible for each other out of love. Not out of egotism, not out of arrogance, not out of you sinned and I don't. Because boy, do I sin a lot with forgiveness. <laughs> boy, do I sin a lot. But out of love. That's what they were doing. Out of love, they went to the people on the other side of the promised land and said, What are you doing? Don't you understand? If you go against God, not only are you going to get destroyed, we're going to get destroyed. Like this whole nation won't exist anymore what are you doing you saw what happened with all the other people as we traveled through the desert <laughs> who disobeyed you god didn't you see what happened out of love being your brothers in christ we are coming to you and saying what the heck is that altar doing <laughs> thankfully god i love the rest of the story uh, with the people on the other side of the promised land they're like no 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 we're good we're good <laughs> altar to god we're all good now sadly god we do know the rest of the story that they that they do start to be entranced by uh, the so-called other gods of the nations around them we do know that they started to intermarry um, and started to worship and follow those other gods and everything <sighs> broke apart um but right now, I just kind of want to remember what an incredible leader and man of God Joshua was for you. I don't think people talk about him enough. I think he's pretty awesome. How he stayed strong and true to you. How he led people into the promised land. How he kept up not only their, uh, the morale of all of the different tribes, uh, but more importantly, kept reminding them who they are in you, uh, that they weren't just common people, that they needed to abide by these rules. Um, just such a powerful story and with so many great lessons that even though this was written thousands and thousands of years ago, God, it still so applies today. God, I guess if I was going to come before you and ask for anything it would just be that brothers and sisters in Christ fear you over what their fellow person is going to say when they come to them in love and say we need to sit down and talk about something you're doing because it's stopping you from your relationship with God it's stopping you from telling or showing other people the love that God has 
I just pray for those relationships. There is definitely a place for grace. Ah, for Pete's sakes, you give me so much grace. But there is also a place for incredible love instead of fear. And God, I just pray that you give people discernment to understand the two. In your son's name I pray. Amen.